Hi, today's video is about food combining and is it necessary to combine certain foods for better health or better digestion? I first heard about food combining when I read the book Fit for Life by Harvey Diamond. It was the first nutritional book that I've ever read, so I didn't know much about nutrition back then. Well, a lot of the information in Fit for Life was based on food combining principles that Shelton wrote in his 1951 book, Food Combining Made Easy. There were certain rules such as having fruit by itself because fruit digests more quickly than other foods and another rule was to not eat starchy foods with protein foods. So for example, you wouldn't eat fish with rice or you wouldn't eat cheese with bread. So combinations like that uh, were meant to be avoided. The book Fit for Life actually made me get into the habit of having fruit for breakfast so that's something good that came out of my experience of reading that book. If you look on the internet for food combining information you'll find different images. To simplify things I'd like to summarize two articles that made sense to me and one is written by Frederick Paternord which would be relevant to those who are following a high raw diet and another is written by Jeff Novick who is simply writing from a whole foods, plant-based perspective. In Paternod's article, he notes that many foods found in nature already contain a combination of fat and sugar in significant proportions. For example, avocado contains some sugar and carbohydrates, and the durian um, is quite rich in sugar but also contains about 20% fat. Frederick Paternod notes in his article that many raw foodists are eating too much fat to get their calories and this is part of the problem when working out which foods to combine. So in order to simplify things, Frederick Partenor just says to not worry about combining um, fatty foods with the sugary foods because if you're following a high carb, low fat vegan diet, you'll naturally already be eating foods low in fat. And because of um, the foods that are already found in nature that are high in fat but also have carbohydrates, your body should also be able to digest all of that together. In Novick's article, he talks a bit about Herbert Shelton's book. And looking through the book, you can see that it's intended for the general public. So there's unhealthy foods included in the menus provided. Like, I had a look at the book as well and there's cottage cheese that's recommended for dinner along with salad. Some of the meal plans are not too bad. Most of the time he tells you to have fruit for breakfast. The rationale for the food combining that Shelton gave was based on his understanding of physiology and biochemistry of digestion at the time and he thought that if you ate proteins, starches and sugars together at a single meal they couldn't be effectively digested and fermentation would occur. Jeff Novick says that it turns out that Shelton is wrong about food combining and that in fact protein, starches and sugars can be digested together. People tend to eat simpler meals because of food combining and this might be the reason that there's improved health and digestion. Novick's article also goes through um, what happens with digestion. He says that digestion takes place in the mouth, the stomach and the small intestine. So the stomach is set up to mainly begin in protein digestion by breaking the larger proteins into smaller ones and it does so in an acidic environment. The stomach uses its very strong musculature to convert the mass of food that we swallowed from a bolus, a soft mass of chewed food, into chyme, a pulpy acidic fluid. It does this through powerful churning and contractions and secretions of fluids. No chemical breakdown of fats or starches occurs here because no enzymes for the digestion of fat and or carbohydrates are released. The fats and carbohydrates simply get churned up. Their real digestion takes place in the small intestine. If we're eating healthfully, this will happen pretty quickly without the fermentation that the proponents of food combining say is supposed to be so rampant. This chyme is then released in small amounts of about 5 ml at a time into the first part of the small intestine where the acid is immediately neutralized and changed to a slightly alkaline environment again. Additionally, bile is released to act as an emulsifier for the fat molecules. 
This is also where the chemicals and enzymes for the major digestion of fats, starches and proteins happen all together. It's truly an amazing event. This is where the real complexity and wizardry of the digestive process happens. The previous areas were just preparatory stages for this part. This is where most of the digestion really happens and it all happens together. Fat, protein and starch in the same environment which is slightly alkaline. There are a few things that can cause significant problems for this system. One is the ingestion of large amounts of fat. This will slow the whole process down because the digestion of fat is very difficult. Chemicals are released that signal the system to slow down so it will have time to work on the fat, which can take up to four hours or more. Um, Novik also notes that drinking with meals can interfere with digestion and also stress and anxiety will shut the whole process down. Possibly the greatest risk of interference comes from overeating. Overeating interferes with everything, including timing, chemicals and coordination. It also causes distension and other problems, especially in the stomach. So as you can see, the practice of food combining is only of benefit if it helps people to avoid those other factors that are associated with poor digestion, such as too much fat in the diet, overeating, drinking with meals, or being anxious or stressed while eating. So both articles agree that fat consumption slows down the digestive process, and it's an important diet change to make, not just for your digestion, but for your overall health. And if you're a high carb, low fat vegan, it's quite easy to combine meals well. It's not something that you have to focus on a lot, but it might take some experimentation to know what digests the best for you. For instance, you might feel better eating fruit separately rather than after a cooked meal or with a cooked meal. And for some, eating acid fruits like oranges with sweet fruits like dates might also cause some gas or bloating. So it's up to the individual to find that out for themselves. Um, personally, I just eat fruit in the morning because that's a habit and that's what I'm comfortable with. What do you think about food combining? Are there certain foods that combine better for you or do you not really worry about the rules? So let me know in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.